Police uh, for the Navajo Police Department. So I just want to give a, a kind of an update and some more information about our enforcement effort. Uh, first of all, the situation, we've seen people starting to comply, but there's a lot of people out there still not in compliance with the orders given by the Health Command and the President's Office uh, to stay home. We're still seeing church gatherings, uh, non-essential travel, and people trying to make uh, runs to the stores and different things after curfew hours. So I want to, again, reaffirm that we are starting enforcement, and we have last night. And to give you a little bit more of a description of exactly what that enforcement looks like, I'll explain uh, what the citations will be. So uh, in order to uh, enforce this, we are looking at the Health Command uh, and the President's Office order. Um, violations of that order will be a criminal nuisance charge. It can be a citation, and we also have the ability to arrest if we feel necessary. The penalty for that is 30 days incarceration and or $1,000 fine if you're found guilty by the courts. So understand this is a, a pretty hefty fine and pretty hefty uh, incarceration time and we do not want to get to that point, but if we're continuing to see non-compliance, we will move forward with those charges. Um, we're also gonna be still doing checkpoints out of the roads uh, day and night. You'll see more of those throughout the Navajo Nation to discourage the travel and actually check on if your travel is essential or not. Um, again, we will issue citations if needed if we find out you're traveling unnecessarily. This is just to, to reaffirm the health order and protect you. I also want to issue a warning also. Um, priority for my officers is their safety and their well-being. Um, I just want to make everybody aware that if somebody knowingly or negligently exposes my officers to this virus, we will seek charges to the full extent of the law. Those charges would be battery on a police officer, which is a tribal charge, and also, depending on the situation, we could ask for federal charges to be sought. Those federal charges actually have federal uh, prison time attached to it. So I'm taking my officer's uh, safety very, very seriously, and I will pursue those with the U.S. Attorney's Office and the tribal prosecutors to make sure people do not put my officers in undue uh, danger. Uh, our first responders are working very hard every day and put themselves at risk 24-7. They also have their own concerns for their own health and their families. And I brought an officer here today to kind of explain what they're doing on the front lines. They have families, they have you know friends that they have to go home to, but yet they don't have a choice. They have to come out and c provide these services to you in the community and they're having to have be exposed to COVID-19, which is very concerning for them. If we continue to ignore these orders given by the health command, my officers will be unnecessarily exposed uh, to this virus. The potential is they will get sick and be have taken off the road. And at a worst case scenario, we may not have a police force to respond to emergencies. So when you call, nobody will be there to respond. This doesn't just apply to police officers, but it applies to EMS, fire, and other uh, rescue services, including the hospitals. If they are overtasked, there's going to be no health professionals, there will be no equipment, and there'll be no bed space to take care of your loved ones if they get sick. This is why we're asking for compliance. So right here today, I have uh, Officer DeKayla Begay uh, with Window Rock Police District uh, to kind of give an insight of what our officers on the front line do every single day. So please listen to her. I'm pleading you to comply with these orders so we don't put our frontline officers and staff in danger so we can move through this crisis safely. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Kayla Begay. Um, I work in the Winter Rock District, as Chief of Police mentioned. Um, from what I've seen, just out on patrol. It is a little concerning that people are still out and about driving. Um, I see cars with packed vehicles, three or four uh, people in there, and it's alarming for me. Um, since I have to work and I'm essential, I do have to go home uh, after every shift. I take the extra precautions, as many of you should, to uh, clean um, yourself, wash your hands and stuff as you go out 
once you're done grocery shopping. But as it has been mentioned before, that the shopping should be done alone. Um, I don't know how many times I've seen people with packed vehicles driving around to Gallup, around Winter Rock, especially. Um, it's important that we follow the guidelines as they're constantly repeated. Um, with the limited supplies that we all have, with the rural community that we have to work in, we understand that people have to go out and have to go travel and get the supplies they need. But that should be limited. And to, for us to stick together and to get this, uh, to get through this all, all together as a, not only as a community, but as an Avo nation and as a, a nation within the United States. Um, with the numbers constantly rising, it worries me a bit more with family who does have underlying medical conditions that I'm worried that I may take it home or I may not have to work for a while if I happen to contract the virus. So it is concerning that a lot of people still aren't taking this seriously. Um, and just a lot of the precautions are going to be repeated. And I urge the community, not only in Winter Rock, but within the whole Navajo Nation, to heed these concerns and to take this seriously as we all try to deal with it. So just stay strong, stay safe, and we'll get through this together.